Come on, West End, get that sorted out now. God bless us, everyone. Why did I watch that as a kid? Why do I still watch it now? Hello, my lovely February family. Mwah, it's Richard here. Oh my goodness. Okay, so first things first, before we get into anything, have you noticed how I'm looking much more in HD now? That's because, my lovely February family, I've treated myself in the Black Friday sales to a brand spanking new camcorder. It was very, very, very expensive, but in the Black Friday sales, it was only very, very expensive, so that's fine. <laughs> so hello, lovelies. Hi, if you're new here, welcome. My name's Richard, and this is Fabre. Fabre is all about theatre, and particularly musicals. Why not join the Fabre family by pressing that subscribe button. Go on, you know you want to. You know you want to. So today, my lovely Fab Fam, I'm going to be counting down my top five Christmas musical movies. What's your favourite Christmas musical movie? Do comment below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So I really wanted to put bits of music from the films of all the music that I love into this video, but because of good old copyright, I won't be able to do that. So you'll just have to try and picture it in your head or hum in your head. <laughs> okay, let's get straight to it. So in no particular order, my first top five musical Christmas film is The Nightmare Before Christmas. Some might argue this is a Halloween film, some might argue it's a Christmas film. I I think it's both. It goes perfectly into the whole holiday season. So The Nightmare Before Christmas came out in 1993, one of Tim Burton's classics. And Danny Elfman, who wrote the music, also gave the singing voice of Jack Skeleton, the main character. So in this wonderful film, Jack Skellington is the pumpkin king of Halloween Town, and he's a bit bored of Halloween. He's been doing the same thing over and over. And he discovers Christmas Town. And oh, he decides to take Christmas for himself and put his own Halloween twist on it. And believe it or not, things start to slightly go wrong. Now, there's never been a full stage version of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Why? It's the perfect film to put into a stage adaptation. In my research for this, I did come across a few clips of people who have done stagings of The Nightmare Before Christmas. But little clips, nothing in full. No, I'm a master of fright and a demon of light and I'll scare you right out of your pants. Yeah! Come on, Broadway, come on, West End, get that sorted out now. I mean, think about it, it would be amazing. The music is spectacular, it's got a very unique look to it. And it's got quite a cult following, actually, The Nightmare Before Christmas, so you're guaranteed to get plenty of sales. Ka-ching! So I have to admit, my lovely Fab Fam, the Oogie Boogie Man, who's the big villain in this film, he really scared me as a kid. <laughs> And it still scares me now a bit, to be honest. I think it's more, I get that feeling of, no, oh, I'm six years old again and I'm hiding from the Oogie Boogie Man under my bed. <laughs> the music in The Nightmare Before Christmas is just spectacular. My personal favorite song is What's This? And it's a wonderful representation of the moment that Jack Skellington discovers Christmas Town for the very first time. And it just takes you back to being a kid when you first see all these amazing Christmas decorations and hear the music for the first time. And the whole sequence is just perfect to snuggle up with hot chocolate too. Now the animation in The Nightmare Before Christmas is quite unique, it's called stop frame animation. So that means they have to set everything up, take a shot of that frame, great, that's 1 24th of a second, then do that about another 110,000 times and you've got the nightmare before Christmas. I'm not joking, I looked it up, there was 110,000 single frames in this film and it took over three years to produce. Okay, moving on to number two, The Muppet Christmas Carol, released in 1992 and directed by Brian Henson, who's the son of Jim Henson, who's the genius behind The Muppets. So many of our favorite Muppets in this, Kermit, Miss Piggy, Rizzo, Gonzo. But the Muppet that always gets my heart in this film is Robin the Frog. He's Kermit's nephew, and in this adaptation of A Christmas Carol, originally by Charles Dickens, he plays the role of Tiny Tim. And his way of saying, God bless us, everyone, oh, it just gets my heart every time. God bless us, everyone. And Michael Caine as Scrooge, he, for me, is the best version of Scrooge I've ever seen on film. It's a perfect heartwarming story with a blend of comedy and music and a little lesson for everyone to learn at the end without getting too dull along the way. And you've got the great comedy classic pairing of Gonzo and Rizzo. And Gonzo actually plays the role of Charles Dickens. I seem to be picking all the films that make me scared as a kid because actually if you watch them up at Christmas Carol, the ghost of Christmas future Terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Why did I watch that as a kid? Why do I still watch it now? And Miss Piggy plays the role of Emily Cratchit, Bob Cratchit's wife, and Bob Cratchit is like the assistant to Scrooge. Even though Miss Piggy only gets a couple of minutes of airtime, she takes it to the max. And She's therefore, gone. Bob Cratchit. And therefore, you can leave this house at once. And therefore, I'm about to raise your salary. Oh, and I am about to raise you right off the pavement, Roger. 
<laughs> Favourite song in that has got to be The Love We Found right at the very end of the film. It's such a heartwarming song and what's so sweet they do this big shot of all of the Muppet characters singing the song and it kind of felt like a little dedication to Jim Henson. The Muppet Christmas Carol was the first Muppets film produced after Jim Henson's passing away. And that final shot just felt like a little homage to like look at all these amazing wonderful characters that Jim created. I always try to watch Muppet Christmas Carol on Christmas Eve. There's just something about it that takes me to a really calm place and it's just perfect Christmas Eve viewing. Okay, number three, Mary Poppins. I know what you're all gonna say, Mary Poppins is not a Christmas film. I know it's not a Christmas film. I know there's no mention of snow or Santa or Christmas, but for me, it's my film that I grew up and watched every Christmas without fail. So originally released in 1964 with Julie Andrews playing practically perfect Mary Poppins. <laughs> and let's not forget Dick Van Dyke and the most interesting Cockney accent that's ever been put on film. Well, now there must be some mistake. So I have such wonderful memories with this film, especially every Christmas watching it over at my grandparents' house. And if you think about it, it does give a wonderful message at the end of the film with the dad, George Banks, making sure to remember that he chooses his family over work and making sure that he has precious memories and going to fly a kite. It's got the same charm and music that you find in Christmas films. I mean, favorite tune, it's got to be super califragilistic. <laughs> I'll start that again. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Ooh, there we go. And of course, Mary Poppins, currently playing at the Prince Edward Theatre in London. Yay! Starring Zizi Stralen as Mary Poppins and Charlie Stemp as Dick Van... Charlie Stemp is not starring as Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> starring Zizi Stralen as Mary Poppins and Charlie Stemp as... Bert. <laughs> Bert, there we go, there we go, we got there in the end. His name is Bert, his character's name is Bert. Charlie Stemp playing Bert, there we go. Going on to number four. It's the most recent film on the list, Nativity, released in 2009. This is such a charming film, it really is. Everyone that went to primary school will understand this film because they'll be involved in a nativity at some point. There was actually a stage adaptation made in 2017, I saw it at Leeds Grand Theatre, starring Simon Lipkin. Whew, I've mentioned him on my channel a few times recently. Simon Lipkin, hello Simon. <laughs> Simon Lick can play the role of Mr. Poppy, who's basically the adult who gets to behave like a big kid for the whole show. I mean, who wouldn't want to play that? I'd want to play that. So just going back to the fact that everyone's been in a nativity, I have tracked down, just for you, my Fabro family, a special Christmas present. Here's me in a nativity photo with the classic look of using dressing gowns and pajamas and towels to make the shepherd's outfits. <laughs> All the songs are great, but for me, my favourite is Sparkle and Shine. Sparkle and Shine. I love that. And even when it's not Christmas, I'll put that song on. Even if I'm in a really bad mood, it just puts a massive smile on my face. I have to admit, the stage adaptation, I didn't love as much as the film. I think maybe it was probably because the stage version obviously had to have more kids in it that were fully trained. And in the film, the kids just feel so much more natural, like real kids, not stage school kids who have been through singing, acting, and dancing training. Just real kids being dead, dead cute and lovely. And Number five, last but not least, a classic to finish us off, White Christmas from 1954. There's so many amazing Christmas films from this era, Meet Me in St. Louis, Holiday Inn, but White Christmas is my favourite film from this time. You may not think initially that you know a lot of the songs from it, but you probably do. There's of course the beautiful title song, White Christmas. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> Oh, and count your blessings. Counting your blessings. Gorgeous. So enough of me singing. The actual film, the main star of it is Bing Crosby, film and performer legend. And there are some stunning dance sequences full of colour and festivity. It's one of those films where they have long dance sequences full of colour and doesn't really advance the plot, but who cares? They look great. <laughs> The basic story of White Christmas is that they create this show to help save the Columbia Inn, which is kind of like a failing hotel before it goes bankrupt. And of course, in the end, love saves the day, and music saves the day, and Christmas saves the day. I saw a stage production of it in 2014 at Leeds Playhouse. So I'm going on about Leeds. Leeds, Leeds. <laughs> it's all about Leeds in the minute, clearly. <laughs> so that was their Christmas show in 2014, which starred Darren Day, who's about to go on a UK tour of Footloose, and Oliver Thompson, who's currently rocking up in style as William Shakespeare at Aunt and Juliet at the Shaftesbury Theatre in London. Well, that's it for me this week. Thank you so much for watching, my fab fam. I'll be back next Hashtag Theatre Thursday with another vlog. I'm going off somewhere to review a show I'm going to Leeds. <laughs> See, I told you, it's all about Leeds at the minute. <laughs> and I'll be bringing you my review of Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, which I'm so excited to see. That's a really big Christmas treat for me. Yay! 
I'll see you next Hashtag Theatre Thursday. And don't forget my fan fam, I also do a radio show, Box Office Radio. Wow, that's what we call a musical. Every Saturday from 12 till 1. All right, well, bye for now, my lovies. Bye. And happy Christmas. Yay. Oh, <laughs> my voice just went there. Happy Christmas. Yay. <laughs>